Hey, 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 I'm back once again, your favorite Latino Narsha, and this time I'm here with our favorite streamer, caster, analyzer, Grubby. How are you today? Hey, guys. We just saw an amazing five, seri five game series between Dig and L5. Like, like <laughs> yeah, how amazing wasn't that? Yeah, I'm feeling the same as you right now, even though you can't tell. Uh, we're getting very spoiled with the quality of games, and I think Stitches has an unbroken win record in that best of five. Yeah. It's just crazy, you know. Dignitas, they win the 3 2, they do it in Dignitas fashion with Mene on Keltas with JPL on Stitches, Bakery on Uther, uh, and then the Illidan play with Zelia has just been instrumental. Can you imagine if, if Zelia didn't practice Illidan going into the event, but he did do all the other things, they wouldn't have nearly the same macro play, nearly the same deletion. It's just like, it's so amazing that you can add one hero to your pool and then have such a good gameplay like this. And then they beat L5, it's, it's really incredible. Because L5 haven't looked like super sharp in the beginning of this tournament, but like for the last couple of games against MVP Black and also in this series, the two wins they have, they looked really convincing. So it was it was close. Yeah, I mean, if you look at L5, they started like this is when they won the World Championships, and then they this is the bottom, and then they started like here, and it's like wow, you know, that's not the L5 we know. They're a little weaker by their own admission as well. Uh, they said that they practice less. Um, and that uh, you know some of their members are leaving or some such, uh, but obviously they're still here and they're here to play, right? But they said they're going to be able to adapt to the tournament. But in the group stage, it was kind of like this: they get slightly better, but they squeeze past, and then suddenly, uh, in the bracket play, it's like 3-0, 3-0, 2-0 up against MVP Black, and then suddenly MVP Black, who looked like the best Korean team, they look bad in those first two games. Suddenly MVP Black comes back, you've got this 2-2 with this crazy fifth, and at this point I'm just thinking like, okay, L5 and MVP Black, they are not, uh, they're not weak in like in the beginning of the tournament. It's not that they're weak, it's just that our expectations are meteoric, and then they're only in the stratosphere, you know, they're not the sun. So it's, uh, I was thinking Dignitas, they were 3-0 against L5 in the group, the true challenge is if they can win this one. Because had they not, you know how people can talk. It'll be like, you know, L5, they didn't. Uh, you know, they got better in the bracket, but when it mattered, they won. Dignitas won again when it mattered, 3-2. And I think as a storyline for Dignitas, that's huge. Because this is, it, you know, this L5 put everything into this. Yeah, because we can all, uh, they are all, uh, all uh, they have obviously good buttons, like the mechanically still really strong, but as you mentioned, like they needed to like come online with like the meta and the tournament meta, but you kind of touched upon it, like EU for the first time ever has two teams in the grand final, like, and we are looking like a really strong region, but that hasn't always been the case. Uh, what do you think is the reason for like, are the other regions slacking or is it just the HSC European scene, like the league so packed with good teams that the quality just ups? Yeah, I think um, what you said, definitely a big part of that, because the way I see it, the wider a pyramid is, the higher the summit. And so Europe in general has a big Heroes of the Storm player base. And then we get HGC League format, which gives people hope to perform. Uh, we have a deep uh, top player pool, so good practice. And then stable rosters. Dignitas and Fnatic have had stable rosters. It matters. And then it's also their main priority. None of the pro players have a secondary huge stream going on or something. Eh? This is what they do, they sacrifice everything, they take the biggest of risks, and I know as an ex-pro gamer, you need to sacrifice almost anything to want to achieve that. So it's very much the desire, the opportunity, and then the, yeah, the league format of HCC, which has allowed Europe to, to, to grow. But I thought it was just gonna be a catch-up mechanic to Korea, and maybe Korea was slightly weaker, but then as the tournament goes on, they have all the opportunity in the world to practice, get better and so on. And their button pressing, like you said, uh, is still amazingly good. So now it's just about teamwork, because Heroes is a teamwork game. And uh, in that, it was a very even match. 
Dignitas came out on top uh, against L5 in that this time. You just mentioned something really interesting I just want to touch upon. Like you're uh, obviously a huge streamer, one of the most popular Heroes of the Storm streamer. And do you think like you mentioned that the best teams, they don't have like streamers that, that have that, that as a priority. Do you think that's kind of important? You see in other teams in HGC, some of them are like streamers. They're doing the all day and then they scream, then they stream again. Do you think that's a bad thing? Uh, so here's the thing, right? Uh, you can never look inside the financial situation of any person. So people are gonna do what they desire to do, what makes them the most happy, what they can do when they have the opportunity. Do you have the viewers, yes or no? Uh, do you have the privilege of having people want to tune into your stream? That's huge. This is not something you can create yourself, it's given to you. And so, uh, when you get that gift, what do you do with it? And the third one is, um, uh, what do you need to do financially? You cannot look into this either for people. You can't judge someone else's wallet. So uh, to a degree, streaming, if it works, can be more dependable than pro gaming, which is why I called it the ultimate sacrifice. To I mean, it's not like you're sacrificing your firstborn son, but uh, you know, life, uh, you can have a certain balance in life where meeting friends, finding love, uh, developing your house, developing your career studies, or you can just have no balance and only pro game. And there's something screwed up about that. Yeah. Like you don't have the balance, but you know that standing up there and raising that trophy is one of the biggest kicks you can get in life. Yeah. And so you're willing to sacrifice all that. Yeah. And so uh, whether, whether or not you can combine that with streaming uh, is up to everyone themselves to decide. I say it's not really, uh, for me anyway, yeah, but there's more talented people out there, there's people that can maybe be more efficient with their time and so on and so on. And it really depends how you distribute the time. Here, I will say this, Rich, uh, the really pro player yeah, from yeah. Korea. He's coming back to MVP now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure he's gonna be freaking good. And when he plays on stream, he's freaking good. But the thing is, he started playing for a long time and he elevated his skills through targeted practice, dedication. It's only after he retired for a while as a pro gamer that he started streaming and now he gets like 600 viewers, but he's going back to pro gaming because he feels that in the end that will maybe give him more satisfaction, right? Uh, and, and the thing is, he already has that level and I think you can maintain. But if you start from somewhere in the middle and you start streaming and pro gaming, at some point you're gonna decide, do I develop my skills? Is that more important to me or do I, and entertain, entertain exactly yeah, yeah. and entertainment really is it's not quite the same as fully focusing on improvement yeah. it will both happen at the same time every streamer also tries to improve their game yeah. but what is your main focus and i think you know better than than anybody kind of you done both so yeah, you like both the pro gaming thing and the streaming thing. And I like, it's all about balance as you mentioned. And I'm impressed you can both have a dog and stream at the same time. Like <laughs> I know how time consuming uh, having a dog I is. I could probably stream more if I didn't have a dog, yeah. <laughs> but he makes me so happy that yeah, yeah. the little animal. Yeah, I'm also a dog person. Yeah, good <laughs> man. Uh, so just to finish it up, we have seen like, some really amazing series this tournament like yeah. it was a 3 to now it was a 3 to yesterday dig fanatic yeah. and now we're going into a grand final between fanatic and dig uh, like on a scale from like 1 to 1 million how hype is this uh, it's very freaking hype yeah. and uh, you know i don't know about the exact number it's 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 super hype you know, it could have been like L5 Fnatic rematch of BlizzCon finals, which would be super hype as well. But then you have the risk that a Korean team wins again. We can't have that. <laughs> now at least there's a European uh, champion, so equal among all regions. NA won a world championship, Korea won a bunch, and now Europe will win one. So balance has been brought to the force, no matter what. Uh, but, but I'll tell you what, there's two things that can happen. Either Fnatic win finally freaking wins a tournament beating their arc nemesis twice or dignitas wins again and can you just imagine how fanatic would feel oh i would just evaporate yeah like they said it if they see a bakery lift that trophy one more time like and yeah as you mentioned they always overtake them at the launch like fanatic looks amazing and then they goes to lose the bracket get back in and beat them in the final so who's gonna win uh, so Fnatic has the 1-0 lead because they have never lost the series yet and they uh, uh, finished higher in the groups. Uh, so that is a fair system and it's a best of seven. So there's plenty of wriggling room. 
So Fnatic does have a small lead in this, and they deserve it because yeah, they haven't lost the whole series. Yeah. But who's gonna win? You know, I believe in heartbreakers. Oh, no. I believe in Dignitas. Oh, no. I know we're in Sweden. <laughs> it's like there is no way to break more hearts here. The, you know, obviously Dignitas have their fans. Yeah, I yeah. love them as a team. So happy that they won, and I think they deserve it too. And there's nothing against it. It's just that story, you know. But here's the thing: players don't care about that story. No. The hype, that's for all of us. Yeah. And for the players, you gotta be greedy. Yeah. You gotta be selfish. Yeah. And you know, winning is what it's all about. That's what all these hours uh, you put in it's for. Yeah, and, and pro gaming is like that. It's like uh, two vampires of each other's happiness. You know, <laughs> only one is gonna win. Yeah. And uh, well, you know. I, I won't say I hope because I think whoever wins will deserve it. Yeah. Uh, so there is there truly, I don't have a hope about it. I just hope it's a good series. And uh, I'm just going to Grinch, be the Grinch and say maybe Dick will do it again. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I'm going to share for both teams. Like, I kind of can pick a favorite. Whoever wins is, is going to be fine in my book. But uh, that's uh, all we're going to take up of your time. Remember, everyone, that if you want to become a pro gamer, stop streaming. Thanks a lot for taking the time. <laughs> no problem.